Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I'm gonna to talk about some of the very best knives for modifying and customization. So we're nearing the end of the year, right? This is when people start to think about gifts for other people, sometimes yourself, right? Uh, but uh, yeah, it, it's, it's really easy to just go and buy something and then give it to another person, right? Uh, or it's really easy to just buy something that has the exact look that you're looking for and then just have it. Uh, but there is a satisfaction in customizing something either for yourself uh, or for another person. There's a great satisfaction in it, actually. Um, over time, I've found that I have this whole different set of, you know, th th this whole different joy that I get out of modifying things. Now, um, before somebody else says it, because I know you're going to say it, Modifying a knife is expensive, even if you're starting with a very inexpensive knife, right? Uh, it depends on what you're doing. If you're just adding a couple of parts, it's not too bad, right? Especially if the knife itself isn't super expensive. But if you're going to go all out, you're going to change the scales, the hardware, you're going to put a custom Cerakote on it, you're going to, you know, yeah, it's going to get really, really expensive. So in some ways, this could be viewed how to take an inexpensive knife and make it really expensive, but specific to the way that you want it. For those of you who are interested, I'm going to be linking um, a bunch of uh, you know parts and things that you can get for knives that I think are really great, uh, knives that are available, parts that are easy to install, relatively speaking. I'm also going to be linking some modification services down in the description for you guys to take advantage of. You can sort of pick and choose. A lot of you guys are super aware of these services, super aware of these knives, right? But for newer people looking to kind of get into this, um, this is who this is for. This is not a demonstration of modification. I do have lots of videos where I've modified knives and done things like that. This is just going to be kind of rapid fire, move through it quickly, give you guys some ideas and some options. So you guys some pictures, give you some examples, um, and then links uh, where you can find this stuff. Thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. There's a link for Patreon right down below. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. It's a good idea to have some basic stuff, of course, like my Wea uh, bit set and uh, driver. These are really inexpensive and really recommendable. You can find them right down there in the description where I talk about my tools. Something like this where you can essentially get through the pivot and uh, lining up the washers and the pivot barrel and the blade and all that. Um, I've actually got a tool that I use for that, but something like a pin, right, or something like you know, uh, this L-shaped Torx driver, something you can get in there and you sort of circle out so that everything lines up correctly so you can push that pivot barrel back through. Also, something that I, I got this from GP Knives, and I'll link it if I can find it, something that you can use for leverage on the inside that's made of plastic or something soft that's not going to scratch or damage the internals, right? Sometimes you can just take two credit cards or three credit cards, tape them together. If they're old and you don't need them, obviously, you can cut them and sort of make your own tool, shape your own tool, right? You can do something like that, but that's really, really handy. And generally speaking, that's really all the more you'll need are some simple tools and things like that. You can see I've got a couple of examples of some spider codes that I've enjoyed. This PM2 has been modified so many times. Um, and this Shaman is an example of a completely modified knife. Let's start out here um, with uh, some easy ones, right? These are gonna be fairly expensive to obtain and fairly expensive to modify, but rest assured, I do have some less expensive options. The PM2 and Para 3 are arguably two of the most modifiable knives in existence. We have a vast array. In fact, let me move these over so that I can put the images on the other side of the screen. A vast array of custom scales, pocket clips and parts, whether you're looking at RGT or you're looking at flytanium. If you want brass, if you want copper, if you want titanium, if you want micarta, if you want G10, right? There's even different, you know, contoured things. These new um, scales from flytanium, these uh, lotus uh, scales that are contoured are just wonderful. You have a lot of options for clips. The nice thing about the PM2 and Para 3 is, you know, we're in a time period right now where Everybody is just like out of stock of everything, but there are these custom parts are floating around out there and are pretty accessible, right? So if you're looking for a specific clip, you're not forced into a corner like you are with getting a certain knife. There are lots of pocket clips out there, lots of stuff. Some of the RGT stuff is some of the most beautiful. It's more expensive, right? But yeah, 
And, uh, you know, utilizing something like, and I'll give my, I'll use my shaman as the example, utilizing something like River's Edge Cutlery's Cerakote service, the blade is actually PVD, but they Cerakoted my titanium scales uh, and actually the Flytanium backspacer, and they did a beautiful job. This is one of my favorite knives in my collection. And they can do not just black, but I mean, almost any color that you can think of. Uh, the combination of, you know, stuff like that really will provide kind of an endless, if you're looking to modify something, and again, you're willing to put the funds into it, you really are, are pretty limitless when it comes to the PM2 and the Para 3. And, you know, like I said, Flytanium or RGT, these uh, scales are shaped so well and they're machined so well that there's really, pretty, in my experience, there's very low risk. I actually have some more RGT scales being sent to me uh, from DLT so that I can demonstrate this in a future upload. Um, but yeah, many, I have many videos of flytanium stuff, so please check that out. But yeah, um, the PM2 and Para 3, absolutely some of the most customizable, modifiable knives out there. I will say, you are going to have to work around these lanyard barrels. This is kind of a bummer. You need to basically pull the scales off and sort of scissor them open. And then you're going to be working the scales off of the uh, pivot barrel. And you know, in some cases, you might damage the pivot barrel, you might damage the scales. Fortunately, Flytanium actually sells titanium pivot barrels for the PM2 and Para 3. I've actually got one installed on this guy and it made everything perfect again. So I really am not super concerned with the original scales on the PM2 or the original pivot barrel because everything fit perfectly when I put everything back together. Same thing with the Spyderco Para 3. Pocket clips, your Lynch clips, your MXG deep carry clips, which is what these are. Again, the RGT clips are fantastic for Spyderco knives. Definitely what I'd recommend. Moving on here, the Benchmade uh, bug out and mini bug out. I have a bug out. I don't own a mini bug out. This particular one is also um, uh, outfitted with some custom flytanium scales. Now you can get on, and I, I would recommend this too, even though it's really expensive, you can get on Benchmade's custom shop program and just build what you want. You can absolutely do that. And the way that they have it priced is absolutely competitive. If you're wondering, let me save you some time. Depending on the build you're wanting to do, you could go and just buy a few, you could buy a basic bug out and you could buy a few parts here or there and maybe save yourself a little bit of money. But the way that Benchmade has their custom shop set up, they're very aware of what some of these aftermarket part makers are uh, charging for their stuff and they have priced their stuff accordingly. So if you're like, I want titanium and I want this, you might be able to get a slightly better deal. And especially, I mean, if you're looking for something that's got a little more detail in it, yeah, the Flytanium Lotus scales definitely do have some more intricate milling than Benchmade's Custom Shop Titanium, which I, uh, that that was what was originally on here because this is a uh, Custom Shop bug out. Um, but if you remember my old bug out, my old Titanium bug out, I actually took everything, it was a standard S30V bug out. I took everything off of it and replaced it with a titanium axis lock, titanium satin finished hardware, uh, the barrel spacers, the pocket clip, um, well, it was already satin. Even the studs on the blade were removed and changed out. I believe that was XXX Adrenaline XXX on eBay that provided a lot of those parts. But Flytanium also has a... Again, a massive, massive array of parts for these things. And Flytanium, a lot, of, a lot of the foundation for this video is Flytanium. Looking through, I mean, I'll, I'll link their stuff down below. Looking through what all they had available, I was like, oh my gosh, there's all this stuff that's ready to, you know, be used to modify knives. And this is stuff that I've been enjoying for so long. You know, getting into the season where people are looking to, you know, give gifts to people, this, this is, makes it fun, right? It makes it personal. So, yeah, and same thing. It's not like uh, River's Edge Cutlery's Cerakote service where they can apply different colors to the blade and scales. And even if you're, apparently, even if you've got G10 or Micarta scales, they can apparently still Cerakote those. I've utilized, like I said with the Shaman, I've utilized the service and it took maybe a week, week and a half to send it, have them do it and send it back. Um, so, yeah, and the quality is great. But uh, color combinations, you know, contrast between materials and, and uh, your, you know, if you've already got a coating or a finish on the blade you want to keep and the different colors of hardware that you can get. Yeah, uh, endless, endless. It's going to be expensive for a bug out for sure or a mini bug out. Let's move on here to something less expensive. One of the least expensive knives that you can modify very easily is 
definitely the Ontario Rat 1 and Rat 2. Um, this is a knife where you almost immediately, the, the cost of modifying it will vastly exceed what you paid for it. But, right, because a lot of people are like, I'm not going to do that because they have this weird subconscious idea that the value, the base value of the knife cannot be exceeded or it's somehow going to ruin their investment on it. This is a $40 knife. <laughs> if you bought this for an investment, you already messed up, right? It, it's yours. You have it, right? So it's like you, you can pay to make it what you want. That's, that's In my eyes, that's the beauty of modification. If I'm going to modify it, I am no longer concerned with the base value of it because I'm modifying to keep it for myself. You can't modify a knife and expect its value to increase. So don't do this for anybody else but yourself. Or if you're modifying it, you know, it's a knife that you want to give a gift to another person. Um, again, Flytanium has brass, copper, titanium. Um, there are a massive number of three-hole clips that will fit uh, the Ontario Rat. Way of Knife, I believe, has some um, customization uh, options as far as like finishes on the blade and things like that. I've not actually used their service, but I've seen, I've definitely seen some pictures of you know knives that they have modified in the past. And again, you can use River's Edge Cutlery to do the Cerakote thing to your blade. And if you're wondering, how well does the Cerakote hold up? Um, the Cerakote's actually going to be fairly durable. If you look at a lot of Benchmade knives from the past, and even current Benchmade knives, they use Cerakote uh, for a, a lot of their coatings. So over time, sure, it will wear away, but that's the same thing with anything. It's substantially more durable than the cheap paint that you might find on a gas station knife or something like that. But yeah, uh, so, you know, adding, of course, copper, like let's say you add copper or brass to something like the Ontario Rat 1, it's definitely going to make it a lot more heavy, right? But if you're going for more of a vintage look, right, if you're going for something that looks like an item of the past, then something like copper or brass is cool because it patinas and it looks aged, right? Having the blade... Uh, you know, acid washed or having a deeper looking sort of finish on it uh, or a darker looking finish on the blade will give it that aged look or perhaps you just want a darker coating on it with a Cerakote service, you can absolutely do that. Or you can give it the whole Terminator look by just making, which is what I do with a lot of my stuff. Again, example with the PM2, you can just go with titanium. Uh, now, adding titanium, you know, a lot of people are gonna say, oh, that's overkill, right? You're adding titanium to an Ontario, it doesn't matter because it's your knife, right? Or a knife that you're going to gift to somebody else. These are the types of things that just make it fun. And the Ontario Rat Model 1 and Model 2 are absolutely far and away. I mean, you could spend, you know, two to three times less modifying a rat than pretty much anything else on this list. Moving on here, knives that I don't own but probably should. The 940 and 945, for the longest time, for the longest time, were just not knives that you could modify or not that you couldn't modify there just was not a lot of stuff now once again we have flytanium coming in with a carbon fiber which is a material i haven't been bringing up throughout this video carbon fiber for sure absolutely contrasts well with bronze uh bronze finished hardware by the way um which you can also a lot of the hardware the screws and things you can also get at flytanium um, but yeah, your carbon fiber, your titanium, your grass, your, your, I'm sorry, your brass, your copper. Um, these are also, you know, you can buy the 945 and 940 with a lot of these materials pre-installed. I believe a lot of those are still available. I hope I'm right. I will link those down in the description so that you have a better or less expensive base for whatever it is that you're going to do to modify them. Benchmade actually does provide various clips that will fit this thing. For the 940, probably the best. I mean, if you're going for the most functional clip, it's probably the same one that's on the bug out. But, you know, you have your split arrow clip, you have your regular, your, your classic uh, Benchmade three-hole clip, and then various other ones, right? All of those things. And moving on here, the Spider Comanix 2, and this is one of my favorite ones. And I'll tell you why. I don't own a Manix 2, but I need to. I've owned the darn thing two or three times, and I just need to get it back in my collection. The Manix 2 is still uh, one of the greatest Spyderco knives of all time, and especially in 2021, is ridiculously over, I'm sorry, underrated. The only thing, the only issue that I really had with it is that the cage was plastic. I hated that. Flytanium has titanium cages, brass cages, copper cages, aluminum cages in various colors. That is, that's one of the coolest things to me, is being able to... Uh, not only change the scales out, because they also have scales for this thing. 
But then you can contrast heavily if you want to with the color or material or both of the cage itself. It's going to take a little bit of time. And yes, you are going to have to work around that lanyard barrel. But like I said, I have a video on exactly how to do it. And the Manix 2, in terms of its foundational construction, has not changed since I did that video. Um, so yeah, you know, if you're going to add uh, titanium scales, right, maybe you're going to send them off to have them anodized, which there are... If you're on Instagram, you can throw a rock in any direction and find somebody in the knife community who offers titanium anodization uh, or titanium anodizing services, right? And for very, it's very, very cheap. Um, or in some cases, you can actually purchase them pre-anodized. Um, but anyways, the contrast between the titanium and whatever material you decide on for the cage can really bring this thing to life. And whether you go with the coated blade or the non-coated blade, right? And then you have all your different steel choices with the man. I mean, I know there's not a ton out there, but there are, there are different steel choices out there. You can really make something special, definitely. Moving on here, the other, probably the cheapest knife on the list to modify and the probably the easiest one to modify. One of the cheapest ways to go is with the Pilar. The scales themselves will probably cost the same or more than the, the, the knife, right? But it's the least expensive and safest way to modify. These are simple knives. Very, very, very simple knives. There's very low risk taking these things apart. If you're using, you know, tools like the Wea, uh, the Stubby Driver, and the Bit Selector, right, you're going to be good to go. They should be very, very easy to switch out. Now, you're still going to be dealing with a steel lock side, but your front, your show scale, so to speak, can be whatever you want it to be. And last but not least, the reason I put this one last is because this the freaking Shaman is just so hard to find right now. Um, but my God, is this thing easy to modify. This is the easiest Spyderco to take apart ever. <laughs> this is so simple. And you know why? It's because it doesn't have that big honking, uh, you know, thing to do. Here, let me get a basic one. There's one over here. So... This has a lanyard hole, right? This is my buddy Shaman, but it doesn't have the lanyard barrel. You don't have to work around that, right? So if you already own a Shaman, right? And you're thinking about maybe spicing it up, doing something different. I actually have three Spyderco Shamans here. I'm not trying to flex, I'm just, you know, examples. So you have your basic Spyderco Shaman, right? He's a lefty, so he's got the clip on this side. This is my old Spyderco Shaman. I've got an MXG deep carry clip on it, and I've got the green scales that came um, on my Shavocado, the uh, River's Edge exclusive, River's Edge Cutlery exclusive Spyderco Shaman. Um, I took those off of this guy, right? That's, uh, it had the, uh, originally the tan or FDE, flat dark earth, PVD coated blade with the green scales. Took those off. Um, eventually ended up with the titanium scales from Flytanium on this guy, which I had sent off to be modified or Cerakoted by um, River's Edge Cutlery. And they also did the Flytanium Backspacer, and then I had another black MXG deep carry clip on this guy. So this was an expensive build, right? The, the knife itself, um, which was originally a, an exclusive from River's Edge Cutlery that is no longer available, that cost quite a bit of money. For example, like since we're at the end of the video and we're talking about one of the most expensive knives to modify, in fact, yeah, this is the most expensive knife uh, that you that, that could be modified on the list. You're going to pay $205 base for the Spyderco Shaman. Then if you want, in my case, titanium scales from Flytanium, I believe these are another $120. So right there, you're looking at $325 just to have a titanium Spyderco Shaman. That's a lot of money. Then you want to have them sent off like I did to do the Cerakote. Right, I believe that was something like seventy-five to eighty-five dollars. Uh, so we are up in the four hundreds now. Then I added the twenty-dollar clip and the twenty-dollar is backspacer. Well over four hundred dollars. Well over. That was an expensive build, but this is one of those where it's like if you're worried about, you know, it's like you're like I, I have the money to do it. I'm just worried about messing something up. The shaman is your friend. The shaman is very easy. Large head sizes. There's only a couple. Take them off. There's some liners underneath. You got some washers in there. You've got a uh, pivot that uh, is the, uh, I believe it's the bushing pivot, and I believe it's also D shaped, if I'm not mistaken. So everything is guided. Everything is lined up. All you have to do is put the pieces back in the slot, right? Square peg, square hole, round peg, round hole, 
right? It's it's easy. Uh, the Spyderco Shaman is one of the easiest knives to modify. So if you already have one and you're just getting tired, right? That was the case with this guy. This is my user. I was just getting tired of the standard look. So I put some different scales on it. And uh, there are lots of different options out there. Brass, copper, titanium, micarta. Uh, lots of people modifying, um, you know, scales and things like that. I will provide as much as I can down in the description. I'm not aware of every single customization service that is out there. If you look through the comments section, you will probably have lots of people making good suggestions on where you can get some of this stuff. But these are the knives that are um, the best. These are my favorite bases for customization and modification. Some of them are more or less expensive, of course. Some of them are more or less difficult. But uh, with perseverance, patience, and a steady hand, um, you will, there's a lot of joy in this and the more that you practice, the better you get at it. You know what to expect. Um, yeah, absolutely. I, I've wanted to do this for a long time, but I wanted to make sure and give you guys the right knives and the right resources. So I hope that you guys at the very least found this video mildly entertaining. Um, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you did enjoy this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.